The MGM Theater of the Air offers a distinguished production this evening under the direction of producer Edgar Selwyn, presenting Mr. Lionel Barrymore in the greatest role he ever created on the stage, the role of Milt Shanks in Augustus Thomas' famous drama, The Copperhead. He will be supported by a fine cast, including George Murphy as Philip Manning and Ruth Hussey as Madeline King. Ladies and gentlemen, Maxwell House presents Lionel Barrymore in The Copperhead. Philip Manning is a young Eastern lawyer who has settled in Illinois and entered politics there. He's in love with Madeline King, granddaughter of a local citizen named Milt Shank. As our story opens, Madeline is in politics too, at least in a small way, as she is hoping that the town school board will give her an appointment at a meeting to be held tonight. But apparently there's some kind of undercover opposition to Madeline's candidacy, and we find her now in Philip's office discussing it. Now, now, darling, there's nothing to worry about. Oh, I hope you're right, but I feel somehow there's going to be trouble. Oh, you're just excited. Mother's going to see two members of the board now, and when she gets through talking to them, you're as good as in. Colonel Hardy and Mr. Gillespie are pretty stubborn men when they want to be. Oh, nonsense. And another thing, darling. How about a kiss? Uh, uh, Philip. Uh, oh, <laughs> hello, Mother. Madeline, I'm afraid I've got bad news for you. I knew it. What is it? I've just talked to Colonel Hardy and Mr. Gillespie, and... Well, you simply haven't a chance. What? Well, that's absurd. It's not absurd. Madeline has the bad luck to be the granddaughter of a copperhead. He's been an outcast in this town for 40 years. Copperhead? What are you talking about, Mother? I can explain that, Philip. During the war between the states, my grandfather lived here in the northern state. But he was a southern sympathizer and refused to fight. Well, what of it? It's still a live political issue in this town, Philip. Mother, I don't see how you can take this seriously. The war's been over for 40 years now. What difference can it make? Your mother's right, Philip. Well, I don't believe it. And even if it's true, I'm going to fight that board tonight and get you the job. Philip, will you do me one favor? Well, certainly, Mother. Will you let Colonel Hardy explain to you how the town feels about this copperhead business? Well, I don't care how the town feels. It's not right. Mr. Shanks is as decent a man as I ever met. And it doesn't make any difference what side he was on. Now, please be quiet for a moment. Colonel Hardy? Uh, uh, yes, Mrs. Manning? Mr. Gillespie, will you come in here, please? Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, hello, Philip. Afternoon, Miss Madeline. Gentlemen. Good afternoon. Colonel Hardy, I wish you'd tell Philip just what this copperhead business is going to do to Madeline's chances with the school board, and also to his own career. My career? Philip's career? Yes. Now, listen, son. You're in the legislature now. You're hoping to run for Congress in the fall. If you get mixed up in a fight in behalf of Milt Shanks now, you can say goodbye to any political future in the state of Illinois. Colonel Hardy, I haven't time to listen to bedtime stories. If you can give me now a wait reason... wait just a minute, son. I don't want to argue with you. But I'm telling you for your own good, Milt Shanks and his whole family are political poison in this state. Am I right, Gillespie? All I know is what the school board is going to do tonight. I'm chairman, and I'm going to vote against this young lady. And I know five other members that swore they'd do the same. Come on, Colonel. Let's get along about our own business. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, wait a minute. Philip, please. This isn't your fight. Don't make enemies because of me. What's the matter, honey? You haven't eaten any supper. I'm, I'm not hungry, Grandpa. I've been watching ever since you come in. You're not yourself. Well, you're not worried about that school board meeting tonight. No, oh, no, Grandpa. I... I've decided I won't want that teaching job after all. What? I'd rather not have it. Why, Madeline, who you been talking to? Somebody must have said something. No, no, I, I just changed my mind. Uh, seems mighty sudden. Does Philip know about this? Yes, well, he knows. Well, disappointed? I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to see him anymore, anyhow. No, Madeline, honey, if you had a mother, you'd tell her what's on your mind now. But you haven't got one, so you'll just have to tell me. What is it, child? Oh, there's nothing you can do, Grandpa. But Philip's bound to get in trouble if he fights the school board for me. So I, I'm not going to ruin his life. That's all. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I'm beginning to smell what's happened. Philip's been talking to Tom Hardy, huh? Uh, or Newt Gillespie. Yes. Oh, Grandpa, I... Oh, no, honey, don't cry. I ain't never said nothing to anybody about this thing. I figured I'd save my breath. But if it means your happiness, I'll talk. What do you mean? Well, you'll find out. Is 
Sit down, Hardy. Yeah, ain't been in this house for 40 years. I don't see why I ought to sit now. Yeah, suit yourself. Sit down, Gillespie. No sense to it as far as I can see, but I'm willing to listen to you. Uh, sit by Madeleine, will you, Philip? Yes. A short horse is soon curried, and my business won't keep anyone long. Colonel Hardy and me was boys together. Our congressman gave me an appointment to West Point, but Tom Hardy ought to have it. Besides, it wasn't convenient for me to go to West Point just then, so I resigned it for him. Before that, we went together to a school where Abe Lincoln come and talked to us. We both knowed him from that time on till he was elected president. Ain't that so, Colonel Hardy? Yes, yes. Mm. Never mind that. If you've got anything to say, say it. Uh, just a minute, Gillespie. You see that mask of Lincoln on the mantelpiece? Well, Hardy and me was together at his house before he started for Washington. A sculpture man was there to take a plaster Paris model of Lincoln's face. Most folks thinks this is an after-death thing, but Colonel Hardy and me saw it Turk just throwed the uh, soft plaster on his face and let it get hard. Lincoln sitting in the armchair, like you are. They hand me that box, Madeleine. Thanks, child. In this box, where I have my letters and keepsakes, is a model of Lincoln's hand. The hand that wrote the emancipation of slavery. The sculpture man sent me these himself, so they're genuine. <laughs> Look at my hand beside his. Bigger man and me every way. All the statues of Lincoln nowadays is copied from this. So you see, we know them. Well... Then the war broke out. Hardy took a vow to support his country. I took one to destroy it. Hardy's company marched off. My Joey, only 16, along with him. His mother leaned against the fence, and the women fanned her. And Joey, <laughs> he looked like a soldier. That's his picture there over the mantelpiece, Philip. You was probably thinner at 16 yourself. Yes, sir, I was. I was peeking through some bushes. Could almost touch them as they marched by. Blue eyes. His mother never said a word. Cried quite a spell. Well, us knights of the golden circle... Copperhead golden circle? We sent help to the south. All we could, and we pies and kettle. I went to Richmond, Virginia, twice. Time went on, Vicksburg come. And one night a fella come into town here and hitched. When would you hear from Joe, says he? Last week, he says. How was he, says he? All right, he says. And he says, Joe's dead. <laughs> I can see your grandma yet crying by the well, a pet in the corner at where Joe had been. By and by, I leaned over to touch her, but she drawed away. Trembling and saying, Milk Shanks, you're unclean. His mother. Well, two or three days she was pining, face against some letters he'd wrote home. And then the two, her and Joey, was buried at the same time. At the church, instead of the trouble I expected from the neighbors, they was all strange-like and kind. Except when I went to look in the black coffin under the flag where Joey was. Newt Gillespie took me by the arm and... Was... Well, you tell him, Newt, what you said to me. I have told him more than once. Well, tell her. She never heard you. I'd give my word before he died. His word to Joey? Yes. He said, if you take me back, don't let him see me. If he'd only fought on the other side, I'd have been proud, even if he'd been the one that shot me. But no copperhead. And I did. 
right in the church. I just took him by the arm and said it was his particular last request. Quiet like, as I'm talking now, and led him out of the church. And I'd do it again. Oh, Grandpa. That left only little Elsie, your ma. And she was so little I couldn't leave her alone. And I was carrying her on my arm. Newt Gillespie was the only man that spoke to me. And in the whole United States. Yes, yes, in the whole world. Only one man wrote to me. Well, I kept his letter, naturally. Here it is. 